Whiskey Media. Hello everybody, this is Vangelis here. How are you doing? Good evening. I wanted to talk to you about a video I put up and then about something I've been thinking about. Matt Tracker! On That Guy With The Glasses, I put up a review of the Specialist Tracker figure from the 25th Anniversary G.I. Joe line. He's the mask one. So uh, go and have a look at that if you want to see some stuff about that guy. There's a link around here somewhere. Have fun. I'm about to express a whole bunch of views about something going on in Canada, and it's about UBB, Usage Based Billing. OpenMedia.ca is the site I'm going to link you to, and if you'd like to enter into this thing without any kind of bias that you may get from what I'm about to say in my ramble about why I'm interested in this topic, then just go there now, because I don't want to color your perceptions if you feel that's going to happen, but I am now going to explain where I'm coming from in all this. There's a thing going on up here in Canada, which is basically that the CRTC has recently cleared all of our ISPs to engage in usage-based billing, which basically means that we all get bandwidth caps, and then if you go over that bandwidth cap, you get billed by the gigabyte, and uh, billed uh, a dollar, or as high as perhaps even four dollars per gigabyte. The reason why I'm so heavily opposed to this is that it basically sets Canada's internet back behind almost every other major country's internet. And I find that a little bit unsettling. I find the precedent set by it to be rather uh, disturbing. Uh, the main reason why is because I think that this this could, uh, to devil's advocate for it, this could pay for all kinds of advances that Canada apparently does not yet have in terms of internet. Uh, I say this Speaking you know, primarily to Americans, I understand, and many of you guys are enjoying all kinds of internet connections that I wish I had. Many have also cited Netflix's infiltration of Canada as the prime reason for this happening, as they are causing all kinds of bandwidth use that they are not entirely beholden to themselves, and all the ISPs are having to deal with all of that. However, where the crux of my lack of support for the ISPs comes from is basically the fact that generally they hold, if not a monopoly, then a duopoly over most given areas of Canada. There is not much actual competition for ISPs out here. If there are two choices for ISPs, usually there are just that, only two. Or there are smaller ISPs which are basically entirely beholden to the big bunch. And I just see this whole thing as a bit of a money grab. Can UBB work? Of course it could probably work, but the, the it's the whole thing of this, this dollar per gigabyte deal where, uh, as I understand it, generally a gigabyte takes less than a dollar to be moved. So to charge over a dollar or in upwards of four dollars for a gigabyte over a given cap uh, does not sit well with me. Neither does it sit well with me that in the case of a usage-based uh, billing system, you're still charged a flat rate for a capped amount that you may not use anyway. I'm, I don't see this as fully even uh, usage-based billing. I see this as basically if you stream things, you get billed more, because when you're streaming things, you're not using the cable packages that nearly all of the large ISPs also provide, like my own Shaw Cable. However, the main concern I have is a very hypothetical one, but it is that of those of us who use the internet for creativity or for entrepreneurship, those of us who try to use this futuristic world we live in and engage in things that our parents and our grandparents were not able to engage in. Speaking for myself, if it was not for the fact that the internet is such an open forum in which one can engage in the creation of media and share it with an international audience, I would never be making videos right now. I would never have joined with the Cape Radio, I would never have met DJ Enigma, and I would never have been convinced to try doing some audio editing, which eventually led to everything I'm doing right now. To go on a bit of an artistic tangent, we live in what I consider to be a beautiful world for digital media right now. The software you can use to create this stuff often is packed in with your computer, and many times is, at least on a very baseline, usable enough to dabble in that art and try to hone some kind of skill to try to put something together. And the thing is, that's not the only part of the amateur media hobby that I do. The other big side of it is the fact that the internet allows you to not only post your work for consumption without having to carry it from house to house, it means that people you may otherwise have never met, or people who may have otherwise never seen what you made, can look at it and comment on it. And I understand that this probably won't nullify the entire uh, 
digital media realm of Canada, but this will uh, this will affect the the bulk uploading of things by people who may be very prolific. This adds a toll booth to the front door of really getting into the media hobby that I had always felt was such a I always felt that we were in this stage where that toll booth was gone, that you didn't have to spend a lot of money on a basic media suite just to try doing it. And now the potential exists for that money barrier to have returned. There are all kinds of other arguments about this too. There's a lot of arguments about the whole nature of UBB and how in Canada our internet itself is practically third world compared to nearly all the other major ones, such as many internets in Europe, many internets in Korea, in America. That was some poor wording. Although I kind of like the idea that there are all these, like, separate internets that are all, like, separate from... They're, they're not separate, though. But that, I'm, I'm trying to get to a point here, I suppose. I find the ruling by the CRTC to have set a very ugly precedent, and one that I think could really adversely affect not just the enjoyment of the internet for everybody, but the ability for Canadians to use the internet to enrich their lives or even find a career they may have thought to otherwise be unobtainable. Needless to mention, various other selfish aspects for folks, like the fact that, hey, you know about Steam and how you generally buy games and download them, those are pretty large games, I wonder what happens when your plan has a somewhat lower bandwidth cap than you remember, and suddenly you're paying money to download the game that you bought. Granted, that probably won't happen for most casual folks, but I always think about the hardcore fringe, because the hardcore fringe, to me, are the most interesting people in those fields. And while the initial implementation of this UBB may do nothing to those folks who are on those hardcore fringes, it sets a precedent that could cut off that hardcore fringe, or make it so that entering that hardcore fringe involves monetary risk. I really don't like where this is going, and I've signed a petition on openmedia.ca, I've planned a letter to send to my MP, and unfortunately that's all I can do, other than stand here on my tiny-ass soapbox and complain about it in front of a camera and on Twitter and tell friends of mine on Facebook. So please visit openmedia.ca if you have any interest in what's going on here. And you don't have to be Canadian to have an interest in this. This is not just about, oh no, the Canadian's internet's gonna suck. Ha ha ha. This is kind of, to me, more about the precedent set by it. And I think that this is a lot more than just a Canadian thing. This is about a country's internet, a country's connectivity to the international community being throttled much harder than I feel it needs to be throttled. All I ask is that you go and check out the, the words being written about this stuff on that site or anywhere else. Google it if you want. If you don't agree with me, that's fine, but I really want to just get the word out there in case some of you don't even know this is going on. On the utterly selfish end, I certainly do hope that my current bandwidth usage does not enter into a realm where I would start being hit by the UBB monster, because if it does truly hit uploading, and I upload a lot of media now and then, uh, I, in the worst case, feel that I would have to end some of the things that I'm working on, and I don't want to end them, and I'm not saying this is like, go sign that petition, or I'm not going to be able to upload podcasts anymore. I'm just saying, on the selfish end, I think it would suck if I had to sit there going like, alright, I've rationed out my bandwidth for the month, I've quit using Netflix, I've quit downloading videos, how much do I have left with normal surfing and email use? What do I have to cut out? Do I have to cut down the podcast? Do I have to cease doing the Cape Radio show? A streaming audio production which has been summarily castrated in its potential by my ISP over the last several years, I might add. If it came down to the worst of the worst, I would prioritize video because I find that process to be the most enriching one to engage in, and I do highly doubt that it will come to be the worst of the worst cases. But all these potentials are presented to me by the precedent that is set, and I do not like it. And all I can do in not liking it is to spread the word about the fact that it is happening and hopefully cause some people who are unaware of it to consider it and consider their own stance on the matter if they choose to even have one. So thanks for listening. I hope that wasn't too much doomsaying for you. Uh, uh, here, look, this is fun. I am a monster. <laughs> I'm a monster. <laughs> And as I said, I don't expect any of you to agree with me just because I hold a viewpoint on the matter. I simply hope to get word out about this matter, and I would encourage all of you to find a viewpoint on things like this, or the greater picture of net neutrality or stuff like that.
I'm not saying that the hyperbolic situations many people bandy about in these discussions should be what we look at right now. I think the thing to look at are the precedents, because the precedents that are set are what cause people to hypothesize those hyperbolic situations. And as more nasty precedents get set, the less hyperbolic those situations tend to be, and the less hypothetical they start to feel. So if you have any views about this, please leave a comment, or if you really want to, a video response, but that's not the important thing. I'd much rather that you guys check out openmedia.ca, go googling, get every side of the story you want, and then have a viewpoint on it, because I think this is something that's very disturbing to be happening in the year 2011. It's a stifling of the potential of Canada's own interconnectivity with the rest of the world. It's a stifling of Canada's internet, and it's a stifling of a lot of the potential that Canada's growing artists and entrepreneurs could be engaging in, and instead they're going to have to worry about, am I hitting my bandwidth cap? How much do I have to account for the money I may have to spend to deal with hitting that cap? Etc, etc, etc. Call me a hippie, but I think that in a perfect world, digital media is one of the greatest innovations of the last couple decades. And the fact that over the last decade, it's been so much easier to jump into, uh, I, I don't like to see something come up that could eventually, down the road, nullify or stymie how much more we as human beings are able to freely pursue those creative notions that we feel. Expression is a wonderful thing, and the more tools we have at hand to engage in that expression, the better. But if we can't share that expression with anybody, then a lot of its point becomes dulled, it becomes blunted, and it's a sad thing to watch happen. Saddest vlog of 2011.